We're gonna make a delicious mac and cheese. The subtle flavors and the toasted breadcrumbs make this my go-to dish. Let's get started. Heat a large pot of salted water and cook your favorite pasta according to the package directions. Once the pasta is perfectly cooked, drain it and set it aside. While you cook the noodles, gather all your ingredients. Let's quickly prep a few items. Grab your box grater and shred four ounces of sharp cheddar cheese and four ounces of pepper jack cheese. You can totally use any combination of your favorite cheeses. Just make sure you have a total of eight ounces. Pre-shredded cheese just doesn't melt well, so stick with block cheese and shred it yourself. Mince one garlic clove. Cut off the root end and smash the clove by placing a knife blade flat over the clove and using the heel of your hand to strike the knife. Then remove the skin and finely mince the garlic. If you want, you can use a garlic press instead of mincing with a knife. Loosely chop about one tablespoon or so of parsley. This is used as a garnish. If you don't want to use this, that's okay. Onto the breadcrumb mixture. This will give you that crunchy texture to the dish. Melt one tablespoon of butter, then add panko breadcrumbs and stir. You can add grated Parmesan to the mixture if you want, but I think we have enough cheese that it's not gonna really change the flavor profile. Now that everything is prepped, let's start making a roux for a cheese sauce. Heat a large skillet over medium heat. Melt two tablespoons of butter. Once it gets hot, add in the minced garlic and stir it for about 30 seconds. Stir in the flour using a whisk to remove any lumps. Add in paprika, onion powder, cayenne pepper, and freshly ground black pepper to season the dish. Slowly pour in one cup of milk and the heavy cream while continuing to stir. You want it to heat up and begin to lightly simmer. Allow it to simmer for about a minute or two and let the sauce begin to thicken. Let's go turn on the oven broiler to get it hot. You wanna do this about five to 10 minutes before the dish is ready to go in. And we're getting pretty close. Now back to the sauce. Reduce the heat to low. Add in the American cheese slices. I like Kraft Singles just because I know it's going to melt well. I purchased some store brand slices before and they've been hit or miss on quality. Some I just couldn't get to melt well. So since then, I stick with Kraft. You may be one of those people that are against processed cheese. I get it. However, the emulsifying agent in the cheese is what gives the sauce its creamy velvety texture. Without it, your mac and cheese will probably get thick, lumpy, and possibly a little greasy. Now add roughly three quarters of the sharp cheddar and pepper jack shredded cheese. We'll use the last quarter for the topping, so just set it aside for now. Keep whisking until the cheese is completely melted into the sauce. It's time to check the consistency. I like to make my sauce a little thinner than I want it in the final dish. This is because the sauce will thicken up a bit. Pour a little more milk to thin out the sauce until you achieve the consistency you like for your mac and cheese. I want the sauce to nicely coat the back of my spoon, but still run off. I think we're good with this consistency. Give it a taste to see if you need more seasoning, but be careful, it is hot. Add salt and pepper to taste. Turn the heating element off. Stir in the pasta until it is well mixed into the sauce. Make sure every noodle is coated. Transfer the mac and cheese into a greased oven safe baking dish. Wait, I think I'm gonna use this small cast iron pan today. If you're using an oven safe skillet already, you can skip transferring the mac and cheese and use the pan that it's in. Make sure you scrape the pan so you get all that wonderful cheese sauce. Top the mac and cheese with the remaining shredded cheese. Then sprinkle a layer of breadcrumb mixture. The butter coated crumbs will crisp up nicely in the oven. It's now ready to go under the broiler. Place the pan in the oven on the middle rack. Allow the cheese and breadcrumbs to crisp up under the broiler. This can take anywhere between three and seven minutes. Just keep an eye on it so you don't burn it. Now let's go check on our mac and cheese. Ooh, look at that golden color forming. It looks ready to eat to me. I can't wait to taste this. It is going to be so good. Mac and cheese is a heartwarming comfort food I can't get enough of. It's one of those dishes I get a craving for. This recipe provides two dinner-sized portions. If you're eating it as a side, it'll serve four to six people. Need to feed more? No problem, just double it. I'll be sharing my favorite recipes weekly 
subscribe and let me know if you also like recipes designed for two. Thanks for joining me. Mm.